Hi there, I'm Dr. Nate Story from Bright Agritech, and this is Aquaponics Academy episode number six. Today we're going to talk about growing plants in aquaponics systems, how plants coexist with fish, and the basics of plant production in aquaponics systems. Welcome to Aquaponics Academy, a Bright Agritech podcast designed to help you overcome common aquaponic issues, learn new growing techniques, and help you be as successful as you can be as an aquaponic practitioner. Join aquaponics expert, Dr. Nate Story, the creator of Zip Grow Towers, as he breaks down complex topics into easy to understand information. And now, here's Dr. Nate Story. So the first question is, what is the plant's role in aquaponic systems? And, uh, you know, this is a pretty easy one to answer because uh, the plant, the, the role of the plant is pretty darn straightforward. Um, it's to basically remove these waste nutrients from the water and clean the water for the fish. Now that's kind of a misnomer. It's not entirely accurate because we've got this really unique interaction between the plants and the microbes. But for the sake of this podcast, we're just going to simplify it and talk only about the plants. So the plants are growing in this system, and as the microbes are taking the waste from fish production and breaking them down, they're changing them. They're fundamentally changing the nature of the waste from fish production. And they're taking that fish waste and they're making it available to the plants. Um, now these are nitrification processes and mineralization processes, oxidation processes, and uh, it fundamentally changes this waste product. And uh, as that waste has changed, the plants begin to take it up and remove it from the system. So the plants are taking up things like nitrate and phosphate and sulfate. They're taking up potassium ions. They're taking up um, calcium ions. They're taking up all of this stuff that if it accumulated in the solution would eventually have somewhat deleterious effects on the fish health. So we don't want these things to accumulate in our water. That's bad news in the long run. And the fish, they will literally continue to poop until they suffocate in their own waste. So we want to remove this from the system as best we can. We do that with filters, and the microbes are, play a key role. But at the end of the day, the plants are the major sink for a lot of these nutrients. So when we, call, uh, when we talk about sinks, I'm going to talk about m microbes in the next episode. But we're basically talking about the end of the line for a lot of these inputs. So the nutrients come into the system in fish food, they're broken down, they're released into the system, the microbes break them down further, and the plants take them up and accumulate them in their tissues. So the plants are basically the end of the line for all of these plant nutrients. They are the final sink. And then of course we harvest the plants, we take them out of the system, and that results in the system getting rid of those waste nutrients altogether. So the role of the plants is basically to be a sink. It's to remove these nutrients from the system and to remove them hopefully in adequate quantities and balanced ways that leave uh, that, that prevent an accumulation of any one nutrient um, in the system itself. So um, the plants are doing a pretty simple role here. Now um, it, it's safe to say that the plants are doing a lot of other things. You know, the roots of the plants are providing habitat for our microbes. So the microbes have more places to live as the plants mature. They're uh, releasing compounds into the water that work for us. And um, if you guys have watched some of my videos, you know that I talk a lot about chelating agents and siderophores and some of these really unique chemicals that plants are producing that help our system out. And if you guys have read some of the research, you know that guys like Nick Savadov have talked a lot about this kind of unknown thing in aquaponic systems that seems to help fish, that seems to help plants, and um, kind of this mysterious... Uh, you could call it a mysterious force of sorts. You know, the plants are releasing all of these interesting chemicals and compounds into the solution. And similarly, the microbes are producing things that help our plants. So it's, it's fun to say, but we haven't nailed all this down. We've got the basic um, interactions all worked out, but there's still a lot of really interesting interactions that are happening. We have a feeling that they're happening, but we don't entirely understand them. So it's kind of an adventure to think about this stuff, and it's kind of a lot of fun to think that, you know, even in this confined environment that we've designed, we don't entirely understand what nature is doing. But it's really, really a kick to think about, and there's a lot of people that are talking about it right now. So make sure you look into some of the research out there. Um, so the, the, uh, the next question that we want to address is how do we choose the right plant for our system? So now we know what the plants are accomplishing, okay? They're removing all this waste from the system. And now we, we want to make sure that we're balancing our system, right? We want to make sure we've got enough plants in the system that we're taking out enough waste. But 
you know, that's not super hard to do. And plants are great at what's called luxury consumption. That means they can take up more nutrients than they can actually use. They kind of pig out on uh, all these aquaponic nutrients. So, you know, the plants are engaging in this luxury consumption. They, you know, there's flexibility there. Not everything has to be perfectly matched all the time. It's not that much of a science. So, um, you know, there's kind of a, a range where we, where we have enough plants that enough nutrients are being removed. And within that range, you know, we're in good shape. We can have a little more. We can have a little less. It doesn't matter too much. So once we've got that balance and we know uh, kind of the role that, that plant is playing, it's to, time to start talking about picking the right plant. And uh, picking the right plant can be, can be difficult, frankly, unless you really understand what your plants need. And um, there's all sorts of considerations here, right? You want to pick a plant that you'll actually eat or that you can actually sell or that you can actually use. And a lot of people, if you go out and you plant a whole mess load of Brussels sprouts and then you bring those home and try and feed them to your kids, they're not going to get eaten. So you want to pick a plant that's, that has good utility, that's useful. Um, if you're trying to sell a plant, you don't want to pick something that's too exotic and crazy that no one will buy it. So pick a plant that uh, can be used, that there's utility to. But also pick a plant that's right for the technique. So if you're growing in raft production, you know I've talked about this in a previous uh, webinar episode or uh, our podcast, is you know raft productions don't really do a great job at supporting things like tomatoes. So pick a plant that's right for your technique. So if you're growing in rafts, don't pick tomatoes. If you're growing in media beds, you know you can, well you can grow just about anything. But say you're growing in three quarter inch granite. You don't want to try and grow beets in three quarter inch granite. They just won't do very well, or carrots for that matter. So you need to pick a plant that's appropriate to your technique. So be thinking about what your plant needs and thinking about uh, you know, what they need support-wise, nutrients-wise, and environment-wise. If, if you're in a place where it gets very cold, you don't want to grow really warm weather crops for the most part. Similarly, if you're in a place that gets really hot, you don't want to pick a plant that uh, likes really cold weather. So be thinking about the environment, be thinking about your markets, and be thinking about picking a plant that's appropriate to your technique. And, um, you know, I could talk about this for a very long time. I could go through all the different crops and kind of list what they like and what they don't like. But at the end of the day, you're just going to have to do that research and you're going to have to understand your crops intimately in order to pick the right ones for what you're trying to do. So... Um, the next one is, you know, picking the right growing technique for your plants. So you can work this in a few different ways. I always say start with your environment. Think about the environment you're going to be growing in and think about the end goal. And knowing what I've said about um, media production and raft production in previous podcasts, you have to pick, um, pick plants that are appropriate to the technique. Or if you have a market for certain plants, you know, in some areas people will say, I can grow a lot of basil. I can sell a lot of basil and I can sell it for a lot of money. So when we're talking with them, we say, well, then, uh, you know, towers are the only way to go. It's the best way to grow basil. And if you really want to get as much basil as possible for sale, then you want to use a tower technique. Um, so that's kind of an example of we know that there's a market for basil. We want to grow basil. How is the best way to grow basil? So we pick a technique that's most appropriate to the plant. Um, now you can go the other way too. If you're a hobby, if you're a hobby grower or something like that, then you can work backwards and pick the plant that's appropriate to your technique. Uh, you can work both ways, and uh, it's not wrong or right to go either way. It just depends on your goals and depends on what you're trying to do. Um, so the last thing to think about is how are you going? How you're going to market or sell your produce? And a lot of people will say, well, I'm just growing at home. I don't want to market my produce. But everyone has to market their produce, whether it's to their family or to their wife to justify, you know, spending another 200 bucks on another aquaponic system. And uh, I know a lot of people who get really addicted and they're pr pretty soon they're spending a lot of money every month building new systems and doing new stuff. And uh, if you're doing that, then you have to sell that to your family. And the easiest way to sell it is by selling produce, right? So um, you can say, well, we're saving money on produce and this this and that, and you really love this homegrown lettuce over that nasty store-bought stuff. At the end of the day, you're always selling your produce, whether it's to your wife, whether it's to your friends, whether it's to your family, whether it's to a real market or a restaurant or a grocery store, you're always selling your produce. And um, so it's something to really think about. Don't pick a produce you can't sell. Don't pick a produce your family won't eat. Don't pick a produce that restaurants don't want or grocery stores don't want or that you hate. Um, I would never grow, uh, you know, there are a few vegetables out there that, that I just, I just really don't like. 
and I would never grow those vegetables because I wouldn't eat them. They'd just go to waste. So this is an important thing to think about when you're, when you're thinking about your produce. Make sure that you're picking something that you can market, that you can sell. And um, then, you know, you just have to go to bat and you've got to sell it. And, uh, you know, if you're a commercial producer, you've got to go out and you've got to get those markets. And if you have more uh, questions kind of about that process, make sure you check out some of our webinars because uh, we talk about it in a lot of detail. Um, you know, how to go out and how to get those markets and how to sell the produce that you're growing. So um, these are all kind of important things to understand and think about when we're talking about plants. Plants are probably the most straightforward aspect or part of aquaponic systems. Actually, fish and plants are both really straightforward. They both do really um, fairly well-defined roles. Now, um, again, I say that plants are doing all sorts of crazy stuff that we can't quite put a finger on. Um, but by and large, we know what they're doing for the most part. Microbes, on the other hand, are a big-time mystery. Um, it seems like they do pretty straightforward things, but there's, there's a lot of mystery to what they do. So make sure you tune in for the next podcast. I'm going to be talking about um, microbes in aquaponic systems and what they're doing for our plants, what they're doing for our fish, and what they're doing for the health of our system. So thanks for, so much for tuning into this episode of Aquaponics Academy. We hope that you're finding these first few podcasts really helpful. We hope that you're learning some new things. And um, we're going to continue to go into more detail um, in future podcasts. We're going to talk about systems, um, you know, the different components of systems, picking systems, building systems, all this stuff. And uh, really um, exciting to me, designing systems and how to design things with really unique goals in mind. So on behalf of everyone here at Bright Agritech, I hope that you're going to stay connected with us. Hope you keep tuning in for uh, podcasts. Make sure you subscribe. And uh, we're going to continue to get you more useful, free information, and uh, all, the, all the best tips and techniques for getting started with aquaponics. <laughs>